Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is the Glitchy Gamer Podcast, the podcast that glitches on the channel every now and then. Thank you for tuning in. Today I have with me Tommy Tellerico, the man who is working on the television Amico. Thank you for having a time with us. Tommy, how are you today? I am fantastic and thank you for having me. Okay, we're going to get this man some questions. I know several people are asking these questions for me and I'm going to ask... So we're going to start off with the servers. I know mm -hmm. that plenty of other companies, they have a maintenance fee like Xbox Live and PSN. Now for yours, are you going to have any maintenance fees? And how much would you going to charge if you do have any maintenance fees? Yeah, I mean, isn't it annoying when you have to like you spend all that money on a console and you have to pay, <laughs> you have to yeah. pay yeah. that kind of stuff? I mean, it, that's kind of anti Amico. To to quickly answer your question, no, we don't. We we're not charging for any of that that kind of service. And and again, you know, for us, when I looked at you know the industry and the state of the industry, even like the hyper casual games and the edutainment games for kids, all the mobile games which dominate the video game industry in terms of sales, in terms of people who play them. You know, there's 200 million hardcore gamers in the world. Those are people who are classified as who play PlayStation, Switch, or Xbox or PC. So you add the console and the PC, it's about 200 million people worldwide. Yet there's 3 billion people that play mobile every day in casual games. So, so if you do the math on that, that's less than 7% of the people in the world are actually playing on those hardcore systems. So, yeah. so let's not forget that the average person who plays a video game is not a hardcore gamer. So when you look at the mobile space and, and what's annoying about mobile, you know, people say, oh, it's free to play. You know, as well as I do. No, it's not. No, <laughs> not it's, really. It's got, I just got ads every 15 minutes. Well, I mean, so there's microtransactions in every yeah. game or they, they want your email address, your friends on Facebook, your friends list on Facebook, or they want your credit card. And if they don't get one of those three things and you're going to get an, a, an average of a 30 second ad every three minutes, and then you're going to have loot boxes and in-app purchases, microtransactions on and on and on and on. And, and so we want to get rid of all that. We want to be the opposite of that. Um, you know, remember when we were growing up, that was never the case, you know? And so a lot of these companies, they make their business and living on how can we grab as much money? How can we suck as much money out of people as possible? Now, here's a statistic that's going to blow you away because people say, oh, you know, well, mobile games is free. Why would anyone ever want to buy an Amico? Well, mobile games, you again, you may think are free, but did you know this? Let's just take the United States alone because, you know, yeah. you got to take out places like China where gaming and mobile is just a whole other level of, of craziness over there. But let's just focus on America for a second. Did you know that the average person, the average person spends about $80 a year on mobile gaming in the United States per year? Yeah. Yeah. This is, in, this is incredible to think about. So anyway, so yeah, I want to do all of the opposite of that. So there's no kind of fees. There's no subscriptions. There's no microtransactions. Oh, okay, oh so, and by the way, oh, yeah. all of our games are $9.99 or less. So for digital games, we're going to pass the savings on to the people. We're not going to be greedy about it, right? Okay. Because you you play some of these console games and they're like sixty nine ninety nine or fifty nine ninety nine for the physical copy, yeah, and fifty nine ninety nine same price for the digital. Well, wait, hold on a second. The the retailer has a hundred percent markup. You had to manufacture. You had to ship. You have to get buybacks. Why 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 aren't those uh, added you know extra incentives? Why aren't they? Uh, <laughs> you know, brought back to the consumer. And so that's our biggest thing within television. Okay. Our two biggest things are value and trust. Those how, are the two gonna, things we want to uh, maintain the servers. Then um, how are you going to get the funding for that for any of the so, so, online games? Well, well, we don't have online games. That's no, the thing. Gonna be There's online no online games. 
No, no. The only thing that's online, because again, that goes against everything that we're about, right? Okay. Our whole thing, our moniker, our motto is together again. And, and one of the big problems uh, that I see in this kind of huge gaping hole that we're that we're going to be trying to fill is that games have been a solitary thing, right? When I was growing up, there was no internet and everybody used to play games together. My mom, my dad, my younger brothers and sisters, my friends would come over. It was fun. Now, I don't want to ask you your age because that wouldn't be an appropriate <laughs> I'm thing in my to 30s, do. So you're good. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, and so I bet your fondest memories of playing games were when you were a group of people. Maybe it was GoldenEye on the N64 or Mario Kart on the Super oh, Nintendo was, or Bomber. I was Man. already doing the NES and the Atari when I was young. Wow. You must. Did you have older brothers or a really cool yeah, mom had, and dad? <laughs> I had an uncle. <laughs> an uncle. Cool uncle. Yeah, okay, there you yeah. go. Um, and so do you remember those moments when you were a kid of of playing with other people and oh you bite me and then i'm gonna beat you and then you'd you know bust each other's balls or whatever do, <laughs> yeah, do you do you remember it was fun time do you remember Friends that couch co-op yeah now let me ask you yeah. did you ever play games with your mom and dad you said you play with your uncle oh yeah all the family we played popeye for days okay so let me ask you this question are your are your parents still alive yeah alive and well Oh, okay, good. So when was the last time you played video games with, say, your mom? Uh, that would be last March when I went to visit the end of February. So I played... So you do have cool parents. Then. <laughs> <laughs> we all played as a family. We played uh, the classics, the Nintendo classic and the uh, SNES classic. Now, why weren't you guys playing on the Xbox and the PlayStation and the, or the Switch? Because the Xbox takes updates, so anytime you <laughs> you turn it on, it takes Cause it updates. Because it would have taken you 45 minutes to update the firmware. <laughs> yeah. But Do you see it, what I'm saying, though? Yeah, you see where uh, I'm getting at? Are you at? ever in the is that, like, realm of your, like, thinking of ever doing online at all? Or is it just going to be we, solely we couch co-op? Co yeah, so, that, so, so that's the thing. Well, well to, be, to be clear, every single one of our games has a single-player mode. Uh -huh. And every single one of our games has couch co-op and versus modes as well. Okay. So, so, you know, the last thing we want to do is, is to, you know, s s our go-to-market strategy is, is for families. And the last thing we want to do is, you know, sell something to a family and then the, and then the young kid takes the thing, brings it in his room and then, you know, is playing online all the time. So that that goes against everything that, that we're about. So we didn't want to, you know, have that thing. Now, but what we but we do have online leader leaderboards and things like that. We have an online store. Okay. But in regards to people playing each other, what we've just what we're gonna do is after this system comes out, after it, you know, somewhat establishes itself. Okay. We're then going to do a bunch of market research for the people who are playing those games. And if we find that a great majority of people would prefer you know, or would like the opportunity to play with other people, like, for example, my brother, my younger brother I was talking about earlier, he, I live in Orange County, California. Yeah. He lives in, uh, in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, around that area. Okay. Now, we would be, not be able, we'd love nothing more than to play some of these old games um, and, and new games, you know, simple games together. And so what we would do, the way we would approach that is that we would, it would be more like a friends system, like, like on, on Facebook, if you will, like where we would have to accept each other's invitation Okay, so to like be Animal friends. Crossing, where only my friends exactly. can go to my island. Exactly, because we because that's a big thing for a parent. Are, are you a mom, Linda? No, not yet. No, okay. So, so one of the one of the big concerns that 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 young moms have is that you know they get their kids on something like Roblox or Minecraft. Even you know, e again, even their younger kids, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, um, and and they worry about the toxicity of you know who are they talking to online who are these people like they got to worry about that right so yeah. we would never want that that's part of our building trust okay. with our customers you know so 
But so yeah, it's something we might look at a couple years down the road. Okay. And if that was the case, then that might be an additional monthly service. Okay. If only if those people wanted to play online or maybe we charge a little bit more for the game and charge a five or seven dollar a month okay. yeah, thing. So like, but that's for for that ahead, also, are you gonna have like physical games since you're thinking about upping the charges of the games? And if Absolutely. you do how would they look? Are they going to be cartridge based, disc based? Are they going to have manuals, cases coming with them? <laughs> this is a great question, Linda. Um, and and so so our our official announcement about all of this stuff because we have some of the most amazing and biggest licenses in the world, and I'm not just talking video game licenses. I'm talking entertainment licenses, sports licenses. I mean, it's 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 pr pr people are going to like really raise an eyebrow because right now people are like, oh, which is just some stupid Ouya machine, um, and it's like uh, Ouya yeah, didn't have any things, of yeah. Yeah, it's like Ouya didn't have any of this stuff that we're about to drop on. We're about to mic drop a bunch of shit, Linda, I'm telling you. Yeah, <laughs> but, well, and uh, then also the Ouya did not have anything to do with, you know, like, uh, if, if I were to say an Ouya next to the television Miko, Ouya was always only mostly indie games that I saw on whenever I was looking right. at the games. And, with and they it, weren't a lot of exclusive ones. Yeah, I mean, and, Towerfall was exclusive. Yeah. But it was a timed exclusive. Yeah, it was, and that's what I'm saying. Like, if if I'm gonna get the Intellivision Miko, I know that Earthworm Jim is gonna be on there. Are you that's planning right. on adding any more after the like when you do physical games? If you are gonna have mm -hmm. them on there, are you gonna add like a charge to them, like extra charge to them? Yep. Yep. So uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I can say. I'll give you all the information I possibly can um, about physical media. Okay. But we, we are going to be releasing a lot of this information. And once it comes out, you'll be like, oh, aha, I get it. You know, okay. because it's something we're doing that's very, very different. Um, we still have some patent pendings. Um, and But we still have, uh, you know, big, big, big licenses that and and things that we're working on that when you'll get when they get released we, we just can't say what they are now. But here's what I can tell you. This is okay. I'll give you as much as I can for you. Okay. Is that... Our, phys our physical media will be sold in stores only at retail because uh, that's another question too is like oh is this going to be available at retail yeah of course it's a real machine it's not it you know it's not some you know How many something titles we're, are you we're going for to get to the launch when you have the system is it going to be one or two available so <laughs> so we have 50. We have 50 games in development now. Okay. Um, we'll probably about 30 of those will be available on launch. And probably about out of those 30 games, there's probably going to be maybe about five or 10 that will have initial physical media for okay, them that's good with to hear. others. Yeah, with others coming later. And what the physical media is going to be, though, is that each store is going to have their own kind of collectible thing. Okay. So everything's going to be exclusive and it's going to depend on how you want to collect. So yeah. for example, you know, a lot of old school folks, um, and I know I'm one of them, like I actually like collecting boxes and manuals and little cartridges and things like that. So, so imagine if you will, the original in television boxes and carts, if you've ever seen those. Yeah, I, I know. Imagine I've played if they, those before. Okay. Imagine if they were like half the size. Cute little, you know, cute little things you, you, you could, you could do like that. Okay. Um, but maybe you liked card collecting. Yeah. Maybe you like collecting comic books. Maybe you like collecting keychains or toys. Or maybe you like collecting Hot Wheels cars or something. You know, or, 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 or sorry, I didn't say Hot Wheels cars, did I? I yeah, said, no, you're uh, good. Just I, I, I collected Hot Wheels. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just cars. I'm not saying we have any uh, big license like that. I'm just saying, what if we had cars? Um, you know, what what if you? And and so let's take a game like Earthworm Jim. What if you could get, you know, a collectible 3D lenticular card? What if you could get a keychain? What if you could okay, get so a... Okay, so kind of like when they run, how they have, like, a little bit of extra bonus for pre-ordering with them. Mm-hmm. 
Except, except it's going to be in retail and it's going to be whatever you like to collect okay. is what you'll be able to collect. And, and the, and the great thing is, um, you know, it, is that um, we're trying to keep the, the cost again, as low, as low, as low as possible. So we're not talking 50, $60 things here. I'm really trying to keep it between 15 and 25 bucks. Maybe if there's something super, super duper cool, maybe it goes for 29, but if I can keep everything around 14, 99 and 19, 99, that would make me really happy. Um, so can that's, you that's tell me, can you tell me, is it going to plug into the controller or is it going to plug into okay, the system like itself for is, the cartridges? I, see I, everybody, I, so I can't say, two. unfortunately, oh, okay. I wish I could. Okay. So it's going to be oh. a cliffhanger on that one. Uh, a, a little bit. Yeah, okay. a little bit. <laughs> um, but, but I can, I can, uh, I, I can, oh gosh. Yeah, it's just we have some patents going on right now that I just okay. my my no, attorneys. No worries. Would, would I was just I was me. just trying to see because I understand that you were no, supposed to like it. like let stuff be released and with everything going on with the you know the COVID nineteen, I wasn't yeah. sure if you were able to like let us know because I was wondering since you missed you know like E three and everything like that yeah. and you were supposed to release a lot of information at the convention yeah. itself. So I was wondering if that well, was know, when you were going to release all the physical like game information at that time. We were, we were, and that, and that was coming in June. So we're okay. a little early. We're still, you know, we're still about two and a half months away from when we wanted to, and when we were going to announce it. Yeah. And, you know, we're working with E3 though, you know, I'm on, I'm on some of the committees uh, of E3. And so I have a kind of whole behind the scenes, uh, you know, insider um, information about a lot of that stuff. And and we, we are working with E3 in order to, um, you know, do something special. Maybe it's a live stream. Maybe, you know, like, for example, just a couple days ago, um, E3 put, um, you know, they, they, they posted our presale. Okay. If you, if you yeah, go yeah. to e3 on twitter they have 2.2 million followers if you go to e3 on facebook they have 670,000 people there and they've been promoting us right so that yeah. that's pretty cool when you get that kind of you know level of of commitment from the big big players you know oh, yeah. and so we're, yeah. we're we're still holding out you know we still might do something big with e3 in a digital environment and if you think about it um if you think about it you know, because I, I always try to make lemonade out of lemons all the time. I always try to look at the positive sides of things and, and I never try to let anything get me down, even when it's, you know, it's a negative thing. I'm like, okay, but how can I, how can we turn this around and make it a good thing? And, and with the, um, you know, with E3 being canceled in person, this might actually be a better opportunity for more people around the world to focus in and tune in on some kind of live press conference stream you know what i mean like yeah. like because if if not for this if e3 just kind of went on as e3 did then maybe uh, you know maybe there wouldn't have been more people you know what i mean so so i'm i'm hoping that this could maybe end up turning into a positive for a smaller company like us who's like you know jumping up and down in the background their arms in the air going me 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 hey we exist <laughs> yeah. too we yeah. exist too playstation and microsoft yeah we know but <laughs> we're over here too trying to do something different and we're the underdogs and we're like rocky balboa so you know pay attention to us too so who knows maybe it'll maybe it'll be a good thing for us you know yeah, I'm hoping to. Um, I know I, I follow uh, you on Twitter. So everybody who wants to keep up to date with E3, definitely go to Tommy Tellerico's Twitter. He's always updating on when he's going to be on Reddit or if he's going to answer questions about stuff that he's allowed to say at the time. Definitely check out his Twitter. I'll drop it in the description. So if you want to just Thanks. go and check it out. Yeah, you're welcome. It will be available for you to just see what's going on with the Intellivision Miko. Now we're gonna jump into like controllers for now, if if you're able to answer okay. these questions. So, sure. Are you thinking of adding a third party like Hori or anybody else to make further updates like controllers and you know, say a game needs a specific kind of controller, are you gonna make that controller for them to have it on the game? Or are you going well, right, to allow well, the third party company to make a controller for that? 
Yeah, well, the, the, we would absolutely allow third-party companies. We have no problem with that. And, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I think your controller sucks. And <laughs> I can never see myself <laughs> playing Earthworm Jim on that pile of crap. Um, and, you know, the reality is, is that people have to play the games. What, what, what a lot of people aren't making a connection to is that the way that we're designing games, Linda, is completely different different. It's a whole different approach. And so everybody, when they watch one of our trailers or they see something, all they're thinking to themselves is, oh, we can play this on a PlayStation controller. There's nothing special about this at all. Yeah. Right. And and I I hate those controllers. What they're not seeing is that all of these games, you can only display so much like I can display graphics of a game, but it doesn't mean that it's what the game's about and how it's designed. So we've been coming out with these things we call Meet Amico. So if you go to our YouTube channel, put in put in uh, in television and check out our YouTube channel and watch all of our Meet Amico videos uh, where we show how we're designing the game around our controller. And Earthworm Jim's a perfect example where people are like, well, well, isn't it just going to be a 2D platform game? And, and, I, and I'm going to hate playing a 2D platform game on that controller. Um, and we say, well, wait a second. Why do you assume that Earthworm Jim's going to just be a 2D platform game? The first ones weren't, right? Yeah. If you think so about it. The original one wasn't a solely platform. We had Remember we had the Andy Asteroids level where he yeah. was on a rocket ship. We had the Peter Puppy where you'd bounce puppies around and, you know, floating up in the air. We had the bungee level where pe you were jumping and trying to hit Slimer into the bungee uh, in the walls. And so we were very limited. The original Earthworm Jim team, there's 10 of us. We were super limited to what we were able to do on the Genesis. Now we've been waiting 25 years because there was so many ideas that we had that we that that we couldn't do we couldn't accomplish because there were only one controller you got with the genesis two with the super nintendo but one with the genesis so we couldn't force people if we wanted to have a two or three or four player kind of get together and or mess with people we couldn't do that on the genesis we had to keep it single player we yeah. had so many fun funny crazy wacky out there ideas that we couldn't do now we're able to do so much stuff. The fact that the controller lights up, the fact that everybody who sits down has the screen on their controller. I like that we it have has the option for left and right. Can, like, you can switch it over and like, right. back and forth. We have motion controls. We have speaker, a microphone. We've been waiting 25 years to make this game again together. We've been waiting for a machine like Amico to be in existence because the game that we want to make couldn't be done on a Switch, couldn't be done on an Xbox, and it can't be done on a PlayStation. Now, I'm not saying from a power standpoint, we're faster and quicker. No, you'll never hear me talking, Linda, about teraflops and giga <laughs> floppy boomy boom and real-time tessellation and the way the sunlight and the 5.1 or 11.1 Dolby Atmos. You'll never hear me talking about that because to us, and this is where I feel the video game industry has really gotten lost in the home console world, is to us, fun is always the most important thing. And who cares what the game looks like? How does it play? And, and, and that moment that you had growing up, all those moments and memories you had playing with your uncle, your mom, your dad, those are the moments that we want to recreate every day on our Amico, right? And like you said, last March when you went back home, you had to pull out the old machines. Well, why? When, what if there was a brand new machine and the focus was to get you and your mom and dad to have fun together? Wouldn't that be some? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to get the purple one. So are you, gonna <laughs> you like the purple one? I yeah, was going to ask you which one you like. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get Oh, it looks one. so freaking sweet. Yeah. Are you know you, you want to know it's funny. Them? What's that? Sorry. Are you going to allow the uh, people to buy the other color console like limited editions and a separate like you can buy them in Yeah, they're going to be like store Yes, they're going to be store exclusive. So certain stores are going to have the the certain special editions. Like for example, if anyone's interested in just the vintage wood grain one, the only place you can get that one is through us direct. 
okay. the white and the black ones, the graphite black and the uh, glacier white, those are going to be like the base ones that, that all the stores will have. Okay. But then certain stores or online stores or retail stores, certain ones will have special colors. So if there's a pink one, if there's a purple one, if there's a red one with the black carbon fiber, those are going to be special stores will have those. And you want to know what's funny about the purple one is that, you know, like I wanted to create something that was, you know, that was like really, you know, I wanted to really kind of, you know, I, I wanted the female market to, to like not be, you know, because a lot of the females, like they don't like the black one, but guys love the black one, right? And so the white one, a lot of the women like the white. A lot of women like the wood grain as well too. But I want to do something like that's really special and cool. And and I sat down with my wife and and she's got like that kind of like galaxy stuff like on her, uh, her case of her phone. Yeah. She's got like, you know, like Converse, like, you know, sneakers that have that. Um, she has like even her laptop, like she got this sticker for her laptop and it kind of has that galactic blue and purplish looking thing. It's kind of like her, her nail polish. She kind of sometimes wears is like that. It kind of like that oil spill kind of thing. And I, I just love the color purple. It's such a strong color. It's like, it, it, it it's, it's a, like a royalty kind of co co color. It's always been a, it, and so, especially like a darker purple, right? And and the amazing thing was when we put that out, I can't believe how many guys also want the purple one. And I was like, <laughs> this is so cool. And you know, you know who I'm a fan of? One of my one of my favorite movies growing up was the original Willy Wonka movie. Oh, not, yes. not the no, no, not the not, creepy not the, not the Johnny Depp one. Not the creepy child molester Johnny Depp version. No, <laughs> I'm talking. I'm talking about Gene Wilder in his prime. I'm talking, and 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 it's one of my favorite movies. And I I literally have actual um, movie props from that original movie that I've oh, purchased nice. over the years. I have a one of the Wonka bars. I have one of the golden eggs. And I have, I actually have the key that opened up the inventing room, that big golden key that he turned. I actually have that prop in my house. That's cool. Um, but one, and, and so I have all these like Willy Wonka posters. And if you, if you notice Willy Wonka, he wore that dark crushed velvet purple, yes, thing, you know? Yeah, so, I remember so that it's too. like, yeah. So it was like, I kind of like that inspiration was kind of like all my wife's galaxy stuff and Willy Wonka's suit. <laughs> but no, I can't I believe how many guys like I, I cool. will say, that from a female perspective, I am not like a girly girl female. I don't like pink mm -hmm. a lot of the times. I'm mostly right. more about blue and yellow. And I mm -hmm. know for like most of the marketing team, you're like probably like, how can we get you know different colors where it won't be like, oh, this is for a girl and this is for a boy. And it's like purple right. usually is the universal one that most guys really and is. women will say, yeah, I, I'm down for purple. I'm okay with that as being a starter color instead of pink or instead of, you know, something that's going to be well, like I, I, you blues know what, for blue, blues you know what for else guys the, and that pink is for girls. You right. Know? Reds for guys. Yeah. yeah. And, well, you know, the other color is white as well. Yeah. Where, where, because of that, and I think Apple has a lot to do with that, right? When you think of Apple, I think you kind of like think of white or silver might come to your mind, you know? Yeah. Um, but mostly like, and, and I think they kind of did that really well. Um, so yeah, I would say purple and white are the two kind of, you know, doesn't matter if you're man or woman, th those are two uh, likable colors. Yeah, it's a, it's a blend. And purple of, being more strong. Yeah, yeah, and I will say it's a blend of like, it's glossy also. And, and the fact that it's not too bright is another reason why yeah. I think that it, it goes so well is because I have a bunch of consoles. I have a gold and I have, you know, most of my consoles are either black or white, you know, or the standard, whatever. Color. Do you have a purple and, GameCube? Uh, no. Did you I get did a purple have, GameCube or I N64? I did not have a purple GameCube. Actually, I didn't have a GameCube ever in my life. That was one of the mm -hmm. few consoles that I never got. Yep. I, I was yeah. more of a PlayStation, PlayStation 2. And it was just because of the simple fact that it was a CD player and a DVD player. So that's the main reason right. why I like the fact that it's like, you know, here's this. It's one of those consoles that it won't stand out too much. 
when I put it next to another console, and that's another thing that I was thinking about, like, what color am I going to buy that's not going to go crazy and <laughs> pop too much, but enough to go, ooh, what is that? That I, I will say you did a good job on that one for the, the purple. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, what's funny, too, is, or not funny, but interesting, is that, you know, when, when, when we were picking, uh, when, you know, when we were talking about like, okay, who can I, who do I want for my marketing team? It was really, really important for me because again, our go-to-market strategy isn't the hardcore gamer. It's not. And then, and this is, I think the disconnect with a lot of the kind of, you know, haters out there or the hardcore elitists as I call them. Um, cause like people like me and you are, are probably considered hardcore gamers for sure. Right. But we're not elitists, you know, like, like to me, how can you be a true gamer if you say, Oh, I hate Nintendo or I hate Xbox. It's like, I'm a gamer. I love all now. I, I might, you know, like I, I want everybody to succeed and, and I'm mature enough to understand that, you know what? Some people love Nintendo and they're fanboys of Nintendo because that's what they like or that's what they grew up on. Some people love first person shooters and they love Xbox and they love, you know, the complexity that that brings in and they're maybe they're esports lovers or, you know, um, stuff. And that's okay. You know, so for to, for to me, I say you can't really consider yourself a gamer if, if you like hate on other systems or you're such an elitist that, oh, whatever I like and whatever I think and everybody else should go to hell and, and, and die, you know. And so, but, but along those lines, when I, when I, uh, you know, created the, the marketing, uh, portion, we're going for moms. We're going for families. We want to build those trust. You know, 102 million Wii's were sold. My mom bought a Wii. Nursing homes per were purchasing Wii's. And a lot of people say to me, Tommy, you're stupid because how you can't compete with Nintendo. The Nintendo Switch is the family de device. And I, and I push back a little bit. I say, look, Nintendo is definitely the most family of the thing that's out there. But I'm sorry, you're wrong. Casuals, hyper casuals are not. Look, my mom bought a Wii. My mom did not buy a switch, <laughs> yeah. you know, my, the, the nursing homes that bought a Wii so that they could go bowling did not buy a switch. They're actually still playing Wii's 14 years later. So don't tell me graphics are the most important thing. Don't tell me that the switch owns the family market and we have no right being there or trying to declare a, a piece of it. And that's just craziness. So when I, um, and by the way, you might not know this, Linda, and, 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 and I, I hope you shout this from the mountaintops because more hardcores need to understand this. Mm -hmm. You know, the video game industry, it's a $150 billion a year industry. To give you a, a sense of how big that is, the entire music industry is only $7 billion. Wow. Amazing to think about. That's how big the video game industry is worldwide. Yeah. Now, out of those $150 billion that came in last year, by the way, video game industry, double digit growth every yeah. year for the last 30 years. So at least 10% growth year after year as well. And out of that $150 billion, what percentage of that do you think was spent, not played, spent by women? Give me a percentage. I is it 20%? Is it 50%? 40, 40%. Okay, brace yourself. And you're going to love this. 80%. Probably more. You heard me. 80% of the money that was spent each year in the video game industry is spent by women. Now, people, and, and, and the thing is, is that, well, who, who, who's buying all the games for the kids at home? The mom. It's the mom who controls the entertainment purse. Mom. Who decides the entertainment and who purchases the entertainment? Who's spending the most money on mobile? Guys are stubborn. They'll just like, eh. well, a lot of guys don't even play mobile, by the way. You know, I think only 30%. Uh, they, they play RPGs every now and then, but that's about it. Yeah, but only only 30% of people who play mobile in the U.S. are men. Yeah. You know, it's 70% women who play who play mobile and and the average person is spending $80. So women are spending a lot of money on mobile. 
They spend a lot of money on on their kids as well. And so our go to market strategy, how many how many advertisements have you seen for moms? Right? Mm, There's not a lot out there. Most of them are actually picking up candy crush. Yeah, candy crush and stuff like that. (laughs) Exactly. Mobile mobile markets going crazy. So when we built our team, I I I handpicked the best of the best that I could find females, women, moms, young women, all the, so for, I'll give you a couple examples. Our, our global vice president of marketing, the woman in charge, her name is Kara. She's in her late thirties. She has three young children between the ages. She just had a baby, uh, three girls from seven to, to one years, you know, just, uh, you know, six months old, six months old to seven years. And she was, she was the head of marketing at Mattel in charge of the Disney line. So if anyone that you know ever bought a Frozen toy, it was because uh, it, it was her fault. Her name's Kara. <laughs> we, always, we always make fun of her. So many eyes rolling say. right now from moms and dads about Frozen. Right. Now, <laughs> we also have Perrin Kaplan. Perrin Kaplan was the senior executive vice president of Nintendo Nintendo US for 18 years. She is the woman in charge of marketing who launched the Wii, who launched the the uh, yeah, Nintendo DS. I remember DS. seeing her at the conventions when she was t- speaking every now and then. Absolutely. So uh, she launched the Pokemon franchise, which is the number one IP in the world now. It surpassed Star Wars about three years ago. Yeah. She was the person who launched that. She's working with us. Now, do you think that that she knows a thing or two about getting, you know, Wii's, uh, you know, the, a, a Wii type device into the hands of families? Absolutely. We even have the former president of Nintendo of America working with us. So this is this is the kind of, you know, thing that like, Ouya didn't have any of this, <laughs> you know, no, Atari VCS doesn't have it. Luck with that. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to end it with the last question. And that is about your services for the systems and the controllers. Can you tell me a little bit about what your idea will be? Is it going to be like we mail the controllers to you directly? Or are you going to do like a third party, like uh, kind of like Geek Squad? that is for Best Buy and they go and they fix everything that is when you return it to them. I, I'm a little, conf- I, I'm, I'm confused. Give me, give me a little more information. So what's the scenario? So somebody bought an Amico? No. Um, and- as far as like in the future, if I were to buy an Intellivision Amico and my controller uh-huh. is not working correctly and right. I want to, you know, go in and get it. You fixed, would mail it in. Okay. Yeah, you would mail it in, and we'd we'd either fix it or send you another one. Our our manufacturing, uh, which is you know one of the biggest manufacturers, and they have offices in China and here in Irvine. Um, they handle all of that stuff for us. And so, yeah, if somebody's got a bum controller, uh, they they mail it in, and we either repair it or they replace it. As far as like the limited edition controllers and the limited edition mm-hmm. systems, are you going to have some available set aside for that like sole purpose? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And 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 keep in mind though, we can manufacture. You know, we we can run off what we need. You know, if if for some reason the purple controllers, you know, people, you know, we needed more purple controllers because everybody wanted a purple controller you know, we, we go and we run them off. We can do about 35,000 units uh, a month per line. So that means that, you know, so when you do the tooling for hardware, for ours, it's about $250,000 to create the tooling to create our machine. And so for one set of tooling, so you spend $250, you get a set of tooling, we can manufacture 35,000 full units, including the two controllers, per month. Now, if we wanted to do 70,000 per month, if we want to have another line running, then we'd have to you know, spend another $250,000 on that tooling. Now, coronavirus, coronavirus has thrown everything up in the air, as I'm sure you can imagine. Oh, yeah. So 
you know, and it's affected us more than more than most because we don't have the buying power of Sony and Microsoft. We don't have a billion dollars in the bank, you know. Yeah. We don't we don't have their buying power, you know, where you know, a company like Samsung, let's make the S20 phone and they're going to they're going to uh, do a, uh, 2 million of them or whatever. You know, Sony when they were talking about their PlayStation 5, you know, I had heard rumors that they were originally going to try to do a million of them for this Christmas. I've heard that number's gone down to 800,000. I've heard that number might be dialed back to 500,000. Um, same thing with Microsoft. And the other thing that people don't realize about manufacturing in COVID-19 is that not only are the, fa the factories are about 50 to 60% back now in China, right? So that's a good sign. Things are starting to improve. It set everybody back a couple months. So for me, and, and in fact, Dean Takahashi um, just did an article today about about in Television Amico uh, over at Venture Beat. You can check it out. And he talked about our pre-orders and the fact that, you know, we have we were expecting like maybe, you know, we wanted to roll out small and then kind of build, right? You know, we're in no rush. We we can we can walk before we run. Again, we're not these big big giant companies, and I don't or I don't uh, pretend like we are. And so, you know, a success to us would would have been if we could have got twenty five thousand units out by this Christmas, twenty five to fifty. That was kind of a cool goal goal for us around the world. Well, we got over a hundred thousand purchase orders just in the United States from the big retailers, we had to shut it off because we went back to them. We said, look, with all this COVID stuff, we can't even manufacture that amount. And they totally understood. And so just in America, we, we, we've done four times the numbers we were expecting and hoping for. And plus we're releasing in Canada, we're releasing in Europe, in the UK, in Germany initially, we're gonna release in the Middle East and so this is just to start. And so for us, we're like, you know, this is really amazing. But but now we have to, you know, now we're having to, you know, you know, fall back and say, OK, we got to restructure a bunch of stuff because what people don't understand, not only is it, we, you know, the amount of machines you can manufacture, but because of the covid all of the components have started to raise in price because of the scarcity the scarcity of these items now every it's like the toilet paper we're seeing here in america right yeah. all of a sudden everybody's buying toilet paper and the or the masks and all of a sudden you can't get a mask and what's it doing to the price it's driving them up through the through the roof well the same thing's happening across all electronics so if you think i'm sitting here sweating i got news for you sony and microsoft why do you think they haven't announced that what how much their machines are yeah. Because they're in a state of panic because they're like seven, eight hundred bucks right now. How much loss are they going to take? Maybe they should wait till after Christmas till all this blows over and put them out for four or five hundred bucks. And so that's the position that everybody's in right now. And so I need to make an important decision as well. You know. I wanted the machine to come out for one ninety nine. I think that's the. I think that's a great price where we get most bang for the buck and the most people buying it. Now, if we have a bunch of you know super fanatic, you know, kind of first, uh, you know, first uh, responders kind of folks, you know, um, who are willing to pay two forty nine because that was the price of the original Wii fourteen years ago. It was two forty nine, but we come with six games and two controllers. This is unheard of. You know, the last machine that came with two controllers, the Super Nintendo in nineteen ninety. 30 years ago. That should tell you all you need to know about where the video game industry has, has gotten to at this point and how, how much couch co-op has gone by the wayside and how it's not a focus. It is a focus with us. And of course, you can hook up to six mobile, six, a, a total of eight devices, download our free app and hook up to eight mobile devices to the thing as well. We're not going to charge you for that. We want that to be a part of the experience. So, so, you know, if my decision is I have to sell it at $300 this Christmas, I'd rather wait. Um, no, no way. I'm not going to do that to our customers or, or people who are excited. So right now we're struggling to try to keep it w around 229 probably go to 249 when it first launches. But you know what? Well, it's going to launch in limited quality uh, quantities. Everybody's going to get it. Everybody's going to love it. 
And, and if the worst thing that happens to us is they're super scarce and everybody wants one, you know, scarcity is a great marketing tool sometimes. And we're not doing it on purpose like Nintendo sometimes does. We're, we're doing it. We're, we're doing it, you know, because that's the state of the world right now. And you know what? By by it, by the next summer after that, we'll get that price back down to twenty nine, one ninety nine you know, when, when all the craziness subsides. So those are the kind of, you know, really tough questions that, that we have to deal with through this crisis. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the things that people, you know, might not think about. Oh yeah. That, that is very informative on what's going on on your guys's end. I I'm, was wondering what was going to happen if, if anything were to be delayed even more. So you definitely mm -hmm. answered my question on the back. And of we my don't mind. know too that, yeah, that's the thing is we don't know. It's not over. There's, you know, everybody's saying, look, the worst is still to come. This is just the beginning here in the U.S. Yeah. So how is it going to end at the end of April? Let's all keep our fingers crossed. It, some say it could go to June. Who knows? So, so for me, I can't give an honest answer about what the future. I can tell you right here, Linda, as we stand here today, right now, currently, we are on schedule to get out a limited number by October 10th. Okay. Now that could change in two months from now, but right now that we we're still on track. Now we, now before COVID we were going to put out, you know, 150, 180,000 units. That was our, that's what we were on track to do. And now that's been scaled way back. And we have the purchase orders. We've literally had to stop taking them. And, and Dean Takahashi did a story on that uh, today. Okay. P positive story. Yeah, for sure. So I want to thank you, Tommy, for taking the time to be on my podcast. Well, thank you. And, and you know, I, I got to say this, and I, I hope it doesn't come across as pandering because it's not, it's not meant to, to be. But, but I really, you know, I wish there were more – uh, female folks out there who do, who are doing what you're doing. You know, it's such a, it seems like such a male dominated, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that. I've spoken to Vera Dark. Um, she's got a, a, a great thing going on there, but I really, you know, you, you, you asked the most amazing, great questions. You were very respectful. You didn't, you're, you're, you're not trying to like prove some kind of ego thing. You're not trying to tear us down. I, I just, I really appreciate, um, you know, you taking the time and, and the respect of, um, of, of talking with me. And I, and I wish uh, if there's any, you know, other women gamers out there who are thinking about doing something like this, listen to Linda and, and, and hear what she's doing because it, it, I think it's great. I've, I've started listening to a bunch of your stuff now and you have such an amazing perspective and you're not a, you're not a hater and you're not drama and you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's so funny, isn't it funny that like guys will try to like make fun of women like, oh, they're so dramatic and this and that. I've never seen a bunch of whinier little bitches <laughs> than the guys who are YouTubers. <laughs> Talk about drama. Holy crap. You're you're keeping it real. You're keeping it professional. You're keeping it intelligent. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to you for uh, for being a, uh, you know, a beacon of hope. Um, <laughs> and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you're encouraging other females to get out there and do what you do because we need more of you. Thank you so much for the kind words. Yeah. No, I, I try to have an open mind and understand that not every company is going to be Xbox or Sony and not yeah. every single one is going to scam like Atari, right. DCS or click <laughs> chameleon and i can yeah. form my own opinion without having to you know automatically from one video see you know oh this is going to be bad or this is going to be good i'm going to watch multiple yeah. videos multiple you know marketing strategy stuff going on and from what i'm i'm gathering i'm seeing that it's going to be you know mostly digital but there's going to be in the future some physical games and i'm liking what i'm seeing as far as everything that is going on right now Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, the system's not for everybody. I get yeah. it. And it's certainly not for hardcore elitists, you know, oh, I, yeah. I, I, and I get that. And that, and that's okay. We, we, we're not going to live or die 
based on if hardcore gamers like the system and buy the system or not. Let Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, and now Google, kind of, I guess, <laughs> let, them, let them fight over those 200 million gamers. I'd rather fight for the other 93% of the entire world who's playing video <laughs> games, who are all pissed off because of microtransactions and ads, and every single game on mobile, except for Jackbox, is a solitary game. There's a couple handful other ones, there's Space Team, there's a couple others, but you know what I mean. Majority yeah. is everybody's playing by themselves. So so I think we're set up uh, to, to, to for success. We got a hell of a team behind us. We are on the, you know, the rocket ship is on the launch pad. And uh, Linda, strap yourself in because we're going to the moon oh, yeah. <laughs> and beyond. Yeah. And on that <laughs> note, we're going to end the podcast. So thank you, everybody who is listening. I hope you all have a great day. I'm going to drop all the links for everything for the television Miko. And remember, keep on gaming, everybody. We are glitching out. Have a great day, Internet. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games too.